Welcome to another episode of Digging for the Truth. Actually, this is DFT Clips. It's a new format that we're starting to roll out. And it's things that we can talk about in a shorter and condensed time frame, but also release more episodes more quickly. These are going to be talking about things going on within the world, um, things that, uh, I mean, whether it be, for example, you're going to see, as you saw in the intro there, we're talking about the architecture of the end times. And today we're jumping kind of in the middle. Um, we're going to go left to right eventually, but tonight we're actually going to begin by talking about the architecture of the end times and what this even means and where it comes from and so forth. So let's just kind of get into the beginning of it, right? Revelations. What does Revelation say? In the end, there's going to be a one world government. Now you can get into Revelations, read Revelations. I mean, there's there's quite a bit to get into. Look at uh, uh, Revelations chapter 12 and so forth. Um, there's a lot of pieces that we're going to pull and break out of here. Um, we're going to look talk about cashless society, the mark of the beast. Um, but tonight, we're going to talk about something completely different. If you don't know what I do for a living, I'm actually in technology. I have a uh, medical record software company. So we're going to actually spend a little time in my wheelhouse tonight, and I thought we would actually just kind of look at uh, some of the news that uh, has come out recently. Um, one of these things I saw, so if you go back to the very first episode um, of Digging for the Truth, we talked about a cashless society. And in that episode, <clears throat> we also talked about uh, artificial intelligence and these supercomputers, uh, quantum computers. And, and so I kind of thought... This kind of has a little bit of a mix. So tonight, I'm actually going to give you a demonstration. I'm going to show you how easy it is now to go and create, um, you know, just with even simple software or APIs, application programmer interfaces, or SDK software developer kits um, to do image recognition. And, and, and this is why this is important. So not too long ago, and then there's, there's constantly... Uh, new articles coming out about this, but there was actually an article not too long ago uh, on the Blaze talking, saying that London is adding millions of Chinese CCTV cameras uh, with facial recognition capability. <clears throat> now, this is really important, and that's actually going to be uh, what I am going to demonstrate tonight. But think of this: we're talking about literally millions of cameras in London alone, Chinese CCTV cameras. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, you want to be able to track people in real time. And I know you're thinking right now, that is not possible, but I'm going to show you tonight that it actually is. First of all, you have to understand that the quantum computers, these massive supercomputers with incredible processing power are already in place. In fact, when you did a search, you know, maybe even find this video out on Google, you used actually a quantum computer to get here. There are, um, they, they are being rolled out and they're incredibly expensive. Only the, you know, the most wealthy, massive, whether it be governments or massive organizations uh, like, you know, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and the like can afford these types of computers. But the technology does exist. So <clears throat> let's kind of look at, there, there's something I thought would be interesting to kind of show you. Um, and it has to do with uh, a, just a simple uh, tool, an API tool that exists. Uh, that you anybody can do. It's actually called uh, Amazon Recognition, and it's an API. Now, you can pay. Uh, it's a paid service, but you can develop towards it uh, for free. And so when you begin to uh, look at what this software can do, it'll kind of freak you out a little bit. So let's do a little demonstration here. So I actually have a, a photo of people you might recognize. A lovely couple there. And so I, I just using this software. Now, I'm using their demonstration, uh, their, their, their demo here. But everything that you're seeing me do, I can go and write a program using this API to do this programmatically. And I can use this any way I want to. I can also, it's called machine learning. So I can then begin to refine and begin to look for specific pieces of data Okay, for example, if I'm looking for car tires or if I'm looking for in this example, let's look. So we, we see here um, Pastor Jeff and Melissa, and it has outlined several things and broken this down. You can see that there, it, it's confident that there are pants, clothing, a smile, head, face, and person. Um, it'll actually show you some other things that it's kind of spooky on the percentage of accuracy. It, it's, it's confident in this. So if we hold our mouse over, we can see that, yes, there are, in fact, glasses on Pastor Jeff. He's wearing a shirt. She's wearing a sweater. Now, think about that, to have software that can distinguish between a shirt or a sweater or a blouse. 
um, or pants and jeans and skirts. I mean, that's pretty spooky. Um, when, so, again, here, he's, he did, in fact, recognize that he's wearing jeans, okay? And so you can begin to see. Now, in fact, I can take this even further. Um, on a previous test that I did this with, with this very same picture, I had it go, and it told me that that was a Christmas tree standing behind them. Crazy, right? Not so. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's take a look at um, another example here. Let's say that we want to an analyze the face. Uh, so I, let's use that exact same image. Um, let's come here. We're going to analyze the face. And so let's <laughs> see how accurate it actually is. Now, for some of this, you're going to have to ask Pastor Jeff and Melissa if the age is accurate, but I'm going to give you a little wink that it's pretty dang close. So when it looks at Pastor Jeff here, um, it says that it looks to be uh, a face, um, appears to be male, age range of 51 to 59. Again, I'll give you a little wink there. Yeah, okay. It also says that he's smiling. He's 95.9% you know, uh, sure that it, uh, it, he, that he is smiling, the face is smiling, and it appears to be happy wearing glasses and so forth. Let's look at Melissa's. Same thing. It says appears to be female. Got that right. Okay. Age range also pretty stinking accurate. She appears to be smiling, happy, and she's not wearing glasses. Confident in that. So you say, okay, all right. Now you can tell I'm a guy. You can tell him I'm a girl. You can see certain things about, you know, who I am and my anatomy and some things of that nature, right? And, but let's, let's say, but you, you're saying that a supercomputer, whatever, it says I'm a guy, but it cannot track me specifically, right? Let me show you how scary this is. So now, I, in this particular, they have a demo here um, that allows you to do just celebrity recognition. I downloaded uh, an image, okay, of Adam Sandler before I got on here. And so let's go and let's bring up the celebrity recognition. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and choose Sandler, okay? It's analyzing it. It's 98.6% confident that it is, in fact, Adam Sandler. Let me tell you, it gives you more detail. When you look at the metadata that comes back in what's called JSON, it tells us right here um, some more information about him. It says, here's his name. The ID doesn't mean much. It tells us specifically the dimensions, okay, on where his face actually is in there, how confident um, uh, they are. So when it talks about landmarks, it's talking about the mouth and the eyes and so forth. It also gives us some additional information to go try to look things up. Um, it gives us a wikidata.org wiki, gives us IMDb. And it, I mean, this, these links, um, it will actually take, this is spooky that it can gather this much information about somebody and dump it out in nanoseconds right here through an API. So you say, well, okay, well, they're celebrities. Well, let me tell you something. When was the last time, do you have a driver's license? I do. And that, that, that right now, every bit of that is already being dumped into massive supercomputers. Okay, massive databases. We know that there are massive warehouses throughout the country that the NSA and so forth store information. Now you say, oh, you're getting out in conspiracy. Well, okay. But here's one thing I can tell you for an absolute fact. Now you have, and I'm going to actually <clears throat> do another uh, an episode here soon about Crayon and some other generative AI technology that is free right now available that we could go out and do a demonstration and you can ask it, hey, draw me something or whatever. This is artificial intelligence. This is, per this is producing art. Now, I'm going to show you a number of different types of AIs, how they can be used, how incredibly scary. Of tr they have trillions of data points. And these trillions of data points, what they do is they produce, they allow, and you stick it on top of a supercomputer in quantum computing, then it can actually look at this stuff virtually in real time. Now you go back to the original article that we started with, right? So here we are, back the original article, um, and it's, it's this, these millions of CCTV cameras sitting on top of supercomputers, an AI that is specifically running software that says look for these types of behaviors and these types of people. And you mix it with your new ESG social credit score. Yeah, that's another thing we're going to talk about. And then, you know, in real time, it's watching you come in and out of your office, in and out of your home, in and out of stores. So you can be tracked in real time. And you say, well, that's kind of crazy. It is crazy. And it's actually something that's already in the works. They do this in China as we speak. So as we move forward, we're going to be talking about a number of things. And, and I, I don't know if you've seen this book or not, and you've probably heard about it. But right here is a book called, uh, you know, The Great Reset, COVID-19. 
This book was written by one of what I would call the most evil people on the planet, Klaus Schwab, with the World Economic Forum. And we're going to start breaking it down, who these people are, what their intentions are, and how the things that they're trying to put together actually kind of line up with end times, creating a one world government. I'm going to show you a number of clips and things over this, this series that it's not my words. This is not conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy fact, and I'll prove it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this quick little demonstration. It's not here to scare you, but I want to tell you something before we go any further. We already know the outcome. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. No matter how spooky it may get, I'm going to talk about tribulation, uh, not the tribulation, but I'm also going to talk about the rapture. And I am 100% convinced in pre-tribulation that God, the Jesus is going to come and take us in the rapture before the worst comes, which is the tribulation. This is this, is, this is where we are. At some point, we're going to be sitting in front of the heroes of our faith in heaven, and they're going to be asking us, what was it like to live right there in the end times when you were on the precipice of all these things, the culmination of our faith, the things, the, the history that already, the prophecies that have already been uh, set in stone, and we begin to see those walk out. And they're going to ask us that, and we have a choice how we behave in these times. And our number one goal, period, no matter what, is to make sure that as many people as possible know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You have what it takes. You are called. God is proud of you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Can't wait to share the next one with you.